for breast cancer is called as TNM staging. We will discuss this in detail. It is called as T1 when the tumor size is less than or equal to 2 cm. T2 when the tumor is 2 cm to 5 cm and T3 when the tumor is more than 5 cm. To understand T4 disease, first we have to know the structures. Deep to the breast, there is pectoralis fascia and pectoralis major muscle and here lies the pectoralis minor muscle. Other structures in the chest wall includes ribs and intercostal muscles. If we look from the front of the chest, this is the pectoralis major muscle and this is the serratus anterior muscle. T4A disease is when the tumor extends to the chest wall not including only pectoralis muscle adhesion or invasion. And here the tumor infiltrates into the serratus anterior muscle. T4B disease is involvement of skin by the tumor. It can present as skin ulceration or as satellite tumor nodules or edema of skin looking like an orange peel known as pudy orange. All these skin changes should occupy less than one third of the surface area of the breast to be called as T4B. Infiltration of the tumor into both chest wall and skin that is both T4A and T4B is called as T4C. And when the breast cancer progresses very rapidly to cause diffuse erythema and edema of skin of the breast involving more than one third of the skin then it is called as inflammatory breast cancer. Now we move on to the end staging. To understand the end staging, first you have to know the local structures in that area. In this figure you can see the humerus, clavicle and sternum bones. This is the pectoralis minor muscle. These nodular structures in the anterior axillary fold are called as anterior group of lymph nodes and in the posterior axillary fold are the posterior group of lymph nodes and along the head of the humerus are the lateral group of lymph nodes. All these three groups lateral to the pectoralis minor muscle are level 1 lymph nodes. These present behind the pectoralis minor muscle are central or level 2 lymph nodes and these present medial to the pectoralis minor muscle are apical or level 3 lymph nodes and these along the sternum are called as internal membrane lymph nodes. For clinical end staging, we have to palpate the level 1 and level 2 lymph nodes in the axilla. If they are not palpable, that is N0 stage. If they are palpable and freely mobile, it is called as N1 stage. If level 1 or level 2 lymph nodes are palpable, but they are fixed or matted, it is called as N2A. If only internal memory nodes are seen on CT scan without any level 1 or level 2 lymph nodes, then it is called as N2B. If infraclavicular lymph nodes are involved, it is called as N3A. If internal memory and axillary lymph nodes both are involved, that is N2A and N2B both, then it is called as N3B. Involvement of supraclavicular lymph nodes is called as N3C. Now let's move ahead. Next comes the M staging. If the disease has spread to the distant organs, it is called as M1, otherwise it is M0. This figure shows spread to both the lungs in the form of multiple metastatic nodules. And here, metastasis to the pleural covering of the lungs has resulted in fluid collection called as pleural effusion. This figure shows spread to liver in the form of multiple nodular deposits. And here, the cancer is spread to adrenal gland. Similarly, the spread may occur to the brain bones or other parts of the body. To make the things easier, we stage the breast cancer into stage groups. It can broadly be divided into localized, locally advanced or metastatic disease. Localized disease includes cases up to T2N1M0 and T3N0M0. Starting from T3N1 onwards, all N2 and N3 and T4 cases are included under locally advanced disease. Metastasis to other sites, as we have discussed previously, is called as M1 disease. In my case summary, it was written locally advanced, but I didn't understand. Now, I understand what it means.